Very good evening and welcome along to the Gebi Stadium. We're all set for Atalanta Primavera against their Fiorentina counterparts. Hi guys, today I'm going to do a quick vlog on a day in the life of a football commentator. I'm off to do an outside broadcast in Bergamo just down the road later on. It's the Supercoppa Primavera. So what that means is it's the title winners from last year's Under-19 Championship, Atalanta, against the U-19 reigning Coppa Italia winners, Fiorentina. Curiously, a repeat of last year's final, which I also did from the same venue. So we're going to give you a bit of an insight into what my day looks like. First things first, have a shave. Ta-da, I'm back and I'm clean shaven. Now, it's just gone midday here. Kickoff is at 6.30 this evening, so I've got a bit more time. I will be getting a lift over to Bergamo later on with a camera operator working on the match, who I happen to know from my time at Inter TV a few years ago, so it'd be nice to see a familiar face. Basically, I've spent this morning doing some prep. I've spoken to some journalists and club employees that cover both Atalanta under 19s and their Fiorentina Primavera counterparts. Um, mi dici un po' cosa ti aspetti da parte di, di questa sera? Cioè, in termini anche di, di modulo, non lo so, di formazione, chi dovrebbe giocare? Ma guarda, formazione io ancora non la sappiamo perché stanno facendo, delle, stanno facendo una rifinitura qui in albergo. So, this match is sort of shrouded in mystery, it's their first match back for both sides after uh, a couple of months without being in action and that always uh, brings with it difficulties lest we forget this is youth team football so all the players that were involved in this fixture last year have since moved on unless they were overage players what they call uh, 40 quarter over here so we're talking about the 2002s and 2003s those are the players eligible to take part in tonight's match a lot of the preparation going into this match more than anything is a case of speaking to people that follow the teams checking pronunciation on players' names, gleaning a bit of information, perhaps a steer on which way the team news might go and who might play, having a bit of background information, but it's also knowing the context of what's going on and the rules of the specific competition as well. So it's three o'clock, I'm gonna to have to talk very loudly because I'm walking in the rain with this big beak of a mask on, but it's uh, brand new and smelling remarkably fresh, which is lovely. So we're now walking in Milan towards where I'm being picked up for the uh, match itself. Then it's about a 40 minute drive over to Bergamo, over to Gavis Stadium, where Atalanta play. 6.30 kickoff, as I said, but before that, a little bit of a wonder in the rain, lovely stuff. Just some thoughts on attire then. Typically commentators dress very smart, uh, suit and tie and all of that. I've had to go with my chunky knit today along with my uh, collared shirt. I do have smart trousers and smart shoes on as well, but it's, uh, it's very chilly. But uh, it is important, I would say, as a commentator to uh, dress smart, to look the part. You're there to do a job. You're there to represent your client. And so that's why I've gone for smart casual today in uh, the Italian sense of the word. So here we are, got to the stadium. This is my comms position. Picked up my pass, have a quick look at the uh, setup up here. Then it's off to the press room to look through my notes and get ready for the commentary. Then come back for a sound check about an hour from now. It's 4.30, two hours before kickoff. <laughs> I have retreated to the cosy refuge of the press room where I've been able to have a cheeky coffee and I'll check through my notes, charge up all of my devices and make sure that I'm absolutely ready come time for team news around about an hour before kickoff. That's 5.30. I just wanted to give you a bit of an insight into my notes here. There's uh, some information with regards to when the sides last played. As you can see, Atalanta haven't played a competitive game since the 17th of October. Today's the 21st of January, so 
therefore not particularly relevant. Fiorentina last in action on the 30th of October. Some information about the coach, Alberto Aquilani, formerly of uh, Roma and Liverpool, amongst others. Fiorentina have won the Coppa Italia back-to-back. Atalanta have won the league title two years on the spin. And here are some very illustrious alumni from this fixture. Abrima Colli now on loan at Ellis Verona from the Atalanta first team. Roberto Piccoli on a season-long loan with Spezia. That is Ahmad Traore, now known as Ahmad Jallo, who's just moved to Manchester United in the uh, January transfer window. And Jacopo Dariva, who played against Paris Saint-Germain for the Atalanta first team in August. So clearly, players can make a name for themselves in this fixture and go on to achieve great things. So just a bit of an insight into my notes. I also have a sheet per team as well with some player notes too. So just about an hour out from kickoff now. This is the resplendent Gevis Stadium, the old Stadio Atleti Azzurri d'Italia. Looking gorgeous. I showed you the uh, comms position earlier on. It's the closest Italy really has to a gantry in my experience. So here's the playing surface. The Under-19 Super Cup, the Supercoppa Primavera, Atalanta Under-19s against Fiorentina coming up in just over an hour's time. A very good evening and welcome along to the Gebis Stadium. We're all set for Atalanta Primavera against their Fiorentina counterparts. It's the Supercoppa Primavera this evening in Bergamo. Last season's title winners against the reigning Coppa Italia champions. So the best opportunity of the night thus far has fallen to Fiorentina and some Willy Spaluto in particular. We saw that save as well from uh, Gelmi after the ball skipped up awkwardly. That was cleverly done by Kobatsky. Cortinovis for Jabwa. Cortinovis! Just denied by Kiti, last ditch defending. Gislandi joining in, nice shape on the cross, and it breaks for Cortinovis to give Atalanta the lead. Fiorini sends it in, Pierotti's header, away by Jabwa. Kiti goes to ground, chance for Fiorentina, and they level. It dropped really invitingly, and Agostinelli. Cracked it past the goalkeeper. Panada. Lovely ball through. Chance here for Kobatsky. And still Kobatsky! Atalanta back in front. Cortinovis away from Bianco. And feeding Forlitsky. He's got Ruggeri to his left. Forlitsky, lovely feed. Can he finish? Oh, it's brilliant! Absolutely brilliant from Lukas Furlitsky. That is the best goal of the night. And you can tell from Atalanta's celebrations that that might just wrap up the Super Cup. Well, there you have it, a long old day. Kick off at half six, but as you can see, you get to the ground at least a couple of hours early, depending on what your call time is. Then obviously I didn't drive myself. I got a lift with a very generous cameraman. So I had to wait for him to finish up his work. All that means I'll get home about 10, 15, 10, 20, really long day. And clearly that's an advantage of doing a game off tube. There are naturally a lot of disadvantages, which I'm happy to talk about in another video, but uh, a good day out. Great experience, and as you can see, hopefully this has given you a bit of an insight into what goes into a football commentary. Long old day, I was up early prepping for the game. Then naturally had to get to the stadium, get all the team news, do my sound check, do the commentary, wait around a little bit and finally come home at the end of it. That's all from me with a mask this time. Hope you've uh, enjoy this insight into a day in the life of a football commentator. Please comment, like this video if you enjoyed it. Of course, please keep subscribing, enjoying the spike in subscribers. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.